Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a nice equation with complex numbers. I'd like to say exponential, it's probably that because we have m over n in the exponent, but what is m and n, right? Well, m and n are numbers, integers, okay? So we're going to be looking for integer values for which this equation is always true. In other words, if you raise i to a fractional power, because m over n is a fraction, right? You get i. For which powers of i? You get i. And you probably know that i to the first power is i, right? I mean, come on. Any number to the first power, no exception to this, any number to the first power, including zero, and infinity, I mean, infinity is not a number, right? So let's skip that one. But any number to the power one is the number itself. So m over n equals one is a solution, which means the trivial solution, obviously. m equals n is a solution. And since m and n are arbitrary integers, we can safely say that any integers that are equal will satisfy this. In other words, if we're looking for uh, ordered pairs like m comma n, this could be something like five comma five or million comma million, right? What is a million? A million comma a million. One million, I mean, not a chameleon, one million. Okay, so what about zero? Zero over zero is, uh-oh, undefined or indeterminate. Some people don't like to use the term indeterminate because that's something that cannot be determined. It's a limit most of the time, right? So you can't evaluate zero over zero. That's why people call it indeterminate for a good reason. But anyways, that's a different story. So if n is zero, we have a problem. So m cannot be zero either. So m and n, they both have to be different from zero. If they're equal, we have a solution, but that's too trivial, don't you think? So let's find, try to find non-trivial solutions. And how do we go about solving them? Good question, right? i to the power m over n equals i. Great. Now, we can actually approach this with Euler's formula, which is the complex exponential, right? How do you write i as a complex exponential? Easy. E, z, like e to the power z. Okay, so we can go ahead and do this. On the Argand plane, which is a fancy name for the coordinate plane with real and imaginary axes, uh, we have a number called i, which is one unit away from zero, and that is called the uh, modulus. And there's an angle, which is pi over two radians, and then that is called theta, which is the same thing as argument. So I kind of summarize the complex plane for you guys. If you're new to complex numbers, by the way, then go ahead and check out my lecture videos. If you like number theory and algebra problems, a little bit of geometry here and there, go ahead and check out my other channel, CyberMath, but cyber with an S. And also, a book about complex numbers is coming up. When I'm done, I'll let you know, but I kind of came up with the cover and I hope you like it. Maybe I can share the cover with you at some point, maybe not, because you know sometimes people like to copy things uh, there's a lot of copycats, right? That's a nice word. But anyways, um, it's also hopefully coming up, okay? Anyways, uh, so how do we solve an equation like this by using the complex plane or the Euler's form or the polar form, whatever you want to call it. But thanks to Euler, we have a beautiful, beautiful expression for complex numbers. Instead of writing cosine theta plus i sine theta multiplied by a modulus r, we can write this as r times e to the i theta. That's the power of the complex exponential, like pun intended. Okay, so this basically replaces e to the i theta, which is a beautiful, beautiful, amazing expression or equation. So i can be written as e to the power i pi over 2 for the reasons mentioned above, right? So can we just go ahead and replace i with that, sure, why not, e to the power i, pi over 2, and then, of course, you're going to raise it to the power m over n, and then that equals i. Now, here's one thing, though, you got to keep something in mind, and that is, not only pi over 2 will be the 
mere argument, because if you add 2 pi to it, which is pi over 2 plus 2 pi, or you can write it as 5 pi over 2, or in general, you can add multiples of 2 pi, and it's an integer, by the way, this always works because it's going to bring you to the exact same point. Hmm. Complex numbers are represented by a point, so what's the use? Well, there is a period, so these are periodic functions, right? So maybe we should use the period right here. Instead of writing pi over 2, maybe I should include, but I don't want to use n, so why don't we change this to k and write 2k pi, right? In other words, multiples of 2 pi. I didn't use it on the left-hand side because I'm hoping that m and n will take care of that. I don't think writing it will bring anything additional. Maybe it's going to be redundant. That's what I'm thinking. But correct me if I'm wrong. Let's proceed with the powers. So what are the powers? i times pi over 2 times m over n equals i times pi over 2 plus 2k pi. i cancels out. i cancel out. And then we get something like this. So you can basically go ahead and hmm, divide both sides by pi over 2. That should give you m over n. And that will be 1 plus 2k pi over pi over 2. And then pi will also cancel out. Hmm, nice. And that's going to give you 4k plus 1. Super duper nice, right? So m over n is 4k plus 1. Well, this has a meaning. You know what that means? It just means that i to the first is 1, I mean i, you know what I'm talking about. And then if you look at powers of i, you get negative 1, you get negative i. The fourth power of i gives you 1, which is critical because then it's a cycle. Now look at this, i to the fifth power is going to be i again. So now we have this one and this one. What does that tell you? 1, 5, 9. Yes. Those are numbers that are equivalent to 1 mod 4, okay? So if m over n is 1 mod 4, then i to the power m over n is going to be i. Example, m over n is 1 when that's m and n are equal. We already talked about it. m over n can be 5, in which case i to the fifth power is going to be i again because it's i to the fourth times i. Make sense? This is 1. Good, good. So how do we express this as a solution though? Easy. You just have to set m over n equal to 4k plus 1. And then from here, you can basically write m as n times 4k plus 1. So the solutions are ordered pairs like m comma n or n times 4k plus 1 comma n such that n and k are integers right n and k are integers but they can't be zero right so we kind of have to subtract zero because if n is zero k can be zero if k is zero m is going to equal n but i think i should probably specify a little more specifically like such that this is true and n does not equal zero of course, I don't have m in the solution set, so I don't need to worry about m values. I only need to worry about n and k. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.